Now let's bring in Dr. Nicole Sapphire. Doctor, welcome. Thank you for having me, Mike. So what's your assessment of this pill? Is it a game changer? Well, it certainly is, Mike. And so if you look at what we've been dealing with COVID versus influenza, the reason that we have been able to accept that there's going to be an annual flu season every year is because we have a vaccine that's able to reduce severity of illness with the flu. And we also have Tamiflu, which has about a 63% ability to prevent hospitalization in people who take it on the early onset of their symptoms. We'll now enter Paxlovid from Pfizer, which recently, just today, got its emergency use authorization. And as we just heard in a study of about 2,200 high-risk individuals, it was able to uh, decrease hospitalization and death by about 89 percent. And when you, they took it in a lower-risk population, it was still able to prevent hospitalization and death by up to 70 percent. So the big question is, are we going to be able to get this medication into the hands of outpatient doctors so that patients can take it early on because it has to be given within three to five days? While the government has secured a contract of about 10 million courses, of this medication. They warn it'll be a very slow rollout. There are tens of thousands of doses ready to be shipped from their Memphis facility. But I can tell you that I don't think that we're going to be seeing regular use of this medication, at least for the next few weeks, maybe even a month. So that's not going to help us in our current surge. The number one thing they need to do right now is everything possible to make sure that people can get tested so that they can start early treatments and make sure those treatments can get to them. So the message is be patient, but relief is coming sometime in the coming weeks. Uh, bottom line, this pill going to help uh, elderly, people with pre-existing conditions. Who else? Well, it's approved for anyone 12 years and older who have high-risk conditions, um, some any sort of cancers, chronic, me chronic medical conditions, perhaps even considered obesity, because we know that that is a risk factor when it comes from COVID-19. Um, they're going to get into the details of it, but at this point, anybody considered who has any sort of risk factor should be eligible for this medication, because our goal moving forward with COVID-19 is doing everything possible to keep people out of the hospital, and that is going to be a combination of vaccinations, boosters, and now treatments targeted to our high-risk individuals. I'd like to squeeze in one more. The folks at the United States Army have also been working on COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, Walter Reed Army Institute of Research sounds hopeful their vaccine may provide broad protection against COVID variants, but it's not been tested on Omicron. How do you assess their vaccine? Well, it just came out in the last 24 hours some of the information about what uh, Walter Reed has been working on, and it does sound very interesting, very different than the current vaccines that we have. What, rather than using mRNA or uh, attenuated viruses, what they're doing is they're taking a ferritin protein, and ferritin is something that we actually have in our blood, and they're putting multiple spike proteins of coronaviruses on that. And so that is that once it goes into the body, the body sees all the different types of spike proteins and creates a more robust universal immune response to coronaviruses. And that is hoping that it will be able to protect against future variants as well as past uh, coronaviruses that we've seen pandemics from SARS and MERS. So it's very exciting. It's in very early clinical trials, but there will be more information to come. Dr. Nicole Sapphire, it's great to have you on the breaking news. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me.